What's going on guys? So today what we're going to be talking about is rock lights. So whenever you order some rock lights from us, this is pretty much what you're going to get. You're going to get our box here. And you get your packaging and everything. This customer ordered 1263 LED rock lights. No, 120 LED, I think. Yeah, 120 LEDs. Um, so here's everything packaged up. Here's your rock lights. Each one's in a pack. First thing what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get everything out of the box here. Table in front of us. And you should also get a thank you card with a QR code, instructions, and everything. All right, so first thing we're going to do is go over, you know, kind of placement. So this customer has 12 rock lights, all right? I'm going to list off a few placement ideas for, you know, the different kit sizes that I recommend. So if you're going to do 12 of them, um, you can see his truck over here. It's already on the lift. We already got lifted up, ready to put the rock lights on it. So with a 12-piece I don't really care what style rock light you have, how big it is. In my opinion, 12, a 12-piece 12 kit, the best placement is one rock light per fender in the center, two under the front bumper, two under the rear bumper, and one under each door, or four under the cab if it's uh, if it's four-door. So in my opinion, that's the best placement. Now, if you're going to do you know 16 rock lights, then two per fender well, Two under the front bumper, two under the rear bumper, four under the cab. Um, that's the best placement with 16 piece. Now, as you go up, when you get a 20 piece, you could probably do the same thing, but do three per fender well. So three in the fin in each fender well, two under the front bumper, two under the rear bumper, and four under the cab. Now, when you start getting up into like 24, you know, 28 piece, 30 piece, you know, stuff larger, larger kits like that, more rock lights, I would probably do. The same thing as the 20 piece kit in the sense that you're going to do three rock lights per fender well, two under the front bumper, two under the rear bumper, and four under the cab. But then the extra left over that you have after you've placed all those, those 20, you just stick them randomly under the truck. Don't, don't put them in the fenders. There, there's no need to have more than three rock lights in a fender. Um, the, 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 you're only lighting up this one little area under the fender on top of the tire, a little bit outside of the tire. There's no re need to have eight rock lights in one fender well. That's just, it doesn't, this, at that, at that point, the rock lights aren't doing anything. They're, it's already so bright, you're just adding more light to the already bright light. Like, it's not really affecting anything. Now, obviously, if you're doing an eight piece, I would probably recommend, I would still probably recommend one per fender, one under the front bumper, one under the rear bumper, and then, uh, two under the cab somewhere and you know kind of spaced out that's just simply because like you want to spread your rock lights out as much as possible you don't want to have a bunch of rock lights you know clustered in in your fender wheels but because like i said like spacing them out and getting a rid of all shadows is is what you're going for when you do rock lights you don't want a bunch of shadows and by placing a bunch of rock lights in certain areas you're kind of creating shadows under the truck if you're not putting any rock lights under the truck at all you're gonna have shadows there you know, he's like I said, we're going to get on to this. All right, this is our 120 LED rock lights. Inside of each rock light pack, you are going to get our bag. It's got our bolts, nuts. It also has our two 10-pound uh, earth magnets inside of each pack. It's not an extra charge. It's, it comes that way. Um, so you get your rock light, 10 feet wire leads, and then our 120 LED um, rock light you can see here. Like I said, 12 rock lights. We're going to do four per fender, which means the four that we put in the fender, we're not going to need the magnets. You're going to have extra. You're going to throw them away, keep them, save them for something, whatever. We're going to use our bolts and our nuts, or what you can do, some people use self-tappers. You can self-tap them up into the fender liners. Um, either, either way works, really. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set these four in the fender liners out of the way. Now, we're going to do those first, but... I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the magnet. The first thing we're going to do, once you get all your rock lights out, or that I like to do, you can do it however you want. We got our four rock lights for our fender liners mounted out of the way that's not going to use magnets. Okay, we got them set aside. The next thing we're going to do, the other eight of them that are going to go under the truck, we are going to install the magnets on all of the rock lights. Just so whenever we are ready to place those on the frame, there is nothing stopping us. We just stick them right on. Very easy. Saves you a lot of time. All right, so what you're going to use 
when you use the magnets is you're going to use your two magnets here they got threads on them right there the two little small short bolts you see here little bitty allen heads then you also have your washers all right so you're going to take your magnet place it down on a table take your washer and your bolt put your rock light on your magnet and take an allen head and tighten it up okay. now you can place your magnet long ways like this or you can twist it and place it kind of horizontal like this either way you want to do it kind of just depends on how much space you have on your frame when you're uh, mounting everything up magnet here that on and then we're gonna tighten it up okay so now that is your rock light with magnet the magnets fully mounted on it they're both horizontal but now you have your rock light with the magnetic the magnets fully bolted onto it and now it'll stick to anything metal I don't know if you can see that but it's stuck to the frame there rock light is stuck to the vise now you're going to repeat that for all of the rest of the eight rock lights or all the rock lights that you're not sticking in the fender liners because obviously your fender liners are carpet or plastic. Um, you're probably going to bolt them in there. You're not going to use the magnet. Every uh, rock light you're planning to stick on the frame under the truck, you're going to mount the magnets on and you're going to stick them on. The magnets are super strong. I've got videos on our Instagram that show the magnets pulling toolboxes, holding big drop hitches i mean they're strong they're 10 they're two 10 pound magnets i mean they this rock light weighs like 10 ounces so this isn't gonna be affected by anything so we got that done now you're gonna repeat that for all the other uh rock lights and then i'm gonna catch up with you guys when it comes into explaining the wiring all right so now we got our two rock lights and i'm gonna show you how they magnetically stick to the front of the truck so keep in mind your wires here I'm gonna stick them to the front frame horn that comes out behind the bumper, okay? And you want to do this logically, right? So you don't wanna take your wire and put the wire to the outside of the truck so then when you run your wire up behind your frame, you see it, you know, and that's for like down the side of the, of the body of the truck under the center. You wanna angle your wire that comes from your rock light towards the, uh, the under part of the truck so it doesn't, uh, you don't see any wire hanging. So that rock light's just gonna magnetically stick right there to the front frame horn. And then you're going to do the same thing for the other side. All right. And then you're going to take your wire and we're going to obviously run it up behind all your skid plate stuff. And we will run it over to the correct side. Now, this is one thing you want to kind of keep in mind. Whichever side you're running your wires up into the engine bay on, you want to probably pay attention to which side the battery is on the truck. So, if, you know, this truck, you know, Fords, Chevys, Dodge, everything's different. So, you know, this Chevrolet may have a battery on the driver's side when the F-150 has a battery on the passenger side. So that's just some things you need to pay attention to. So, like, obviously, we're going to check the battery first. And if the battery's on the passenger side, we're going to take this rock light wire and run it over and connect to this one and then run one up into the uh, engine bay. So that's pretty much what we're going to do then. We're going to... Choose which side your battery's on. That's where you're going to run all your wires up. That's going to be your game plan. So when you're starting from the back, we're going to go ahead and just kind of magnetically stick and mount all the rock lights. But whenever we go to wire everything, we're going to start from the back and work our way to the front. Um, so then we're going to go ahead and stick all the rock lights under the truck, magnetically stick them to the frame, and then I'm going to lower it back down. We're going to mount them into the fenders, and then we're going to get to running wires, and I'll pick up with you guys then. All right, guys. So now I got every rock light magnets put on. Got more over here. Now, before I show you, you know, us sticking them on the truck, I'm going to explain something to you. seems like a lot of people do not understand uh, hard wiring. I guess the way you will take positive and negative wires, one red and one. So we've got two lights here. we got positive and negative on each one and how to connect them together. Because none of my products come with plug and play. Personally, plug and play is garbage. I do not agree with it. I don't. I think it's horrible. It never fails. With plug and play kits, you will always have a bundled up jumble of wire 
zip tied and shoved up into a cubby some, somewhere. I just, I don't think you can do a clean install with plug and play. Sure, it saves you like, what, 20 minutes maybe on your install because instead of crimping, you have to just plug. But in the end, of, in the end a hardwired system is so much better, so much more reliable um, if it's done correctly. Um, first thing I'm going to talk about is that. And then, um, then I will show you how to put them on the truck. Also, with our rock lights, we have like eight options of rock lights or more, probably. We have a nine LED, which is pretty general. You see that most places. We have a 24 LED that's also uh, pretty general. And then we have a 63 LED that's that oval shape that you may have seen a lot of places. We're actually redesigning that. I'm actually getting rid of that uh, style and discontinuing it. Um, it's going, the new 63 LED is going to be a rock light shaped like this. Excuse me, the new 36 LED is going to be a rock light similar shape to this, but about a quarter of the size. It's going to be small. And it's also going to have four built-in magnets in the bottom. Instead of you bolting the magnets to the rock light, they're going to be already built into the bottom. So that's going to be our new rock light release here in a couple months, probably as of, I'm going to say around October, November of 24. We should have the new 36 LED style released. All right, then we have a step above the 36 LED style, which is a 63 LED style. It is the same casing housing as this, except there's less LED chips. You can see here, these have a, there's 120 LED chips in this rock light. Well, the 63 LED rock light is the same rock light housing, but there's less LED chips inside. So you can, you'll notice that. And then we have, which is also fully magnetic. It comes with the magnets that you bolt onto the back. The next step up is the 120 LED rock light, which is what we have here. This is 120 LED chips, fully magnetic, and then we have one more larger than that, which is a 150 LED rock light. It is a slightly different style. It's got four side emitting angled lights, 150 LEDs total, six built-in magnets in the back of it. Everything's 10 foot wire leads, positive negative hard wire. And then here, probably November of 24, we're going to have a Another larger rock light release. This one's going to be pretty game changing. I guess a new ability to the rock lights, which is going to be pretty sick. You guys will have to uh, watch out for our content on that one. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. You can check on our websites, northgeorgialighting.myshopify.com, I believe. We'll tag it in the description of this video. So now we got that pretty much taken care of. Well, actually, I'm going to show you how to hardwire these rock lights. So this is just a little short, dummy, dumbed down install in front of you. You're going to have both your rock lights and you're going to like, let's picture this as in you have two mounted in your fender wells, right? There's two of them mounted up in your fender well. The way you're going to connect these together is you're going to take the positive and negative leads and strip them. So you have one red and one black on each light, right? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to strip these off. You're going to strip both of the ends off so you have wire exposed. Okay, so when you have the wire exposed like this, then you're just going to, going to match up the colors. So we have a red and red. We're going to twist together. And a black and black we're going to twist together. Okay. Now, once you've done this, technically what you've done is you've turned two positive and negative connections into one positive and negative connection. All right, that's what you call daisy chaining. If those of you that do not know, that's how you daisy chain. Then you're going to take a crimp connect, you're going to put it on here, and you're going to crimp it down. I'm not going to do it because we have to install the lights, but I'm going to crimp it down here, and then you're going to put the other crimp connect on the positive one, and you're going to crimp it down as well. And once you get both of these crimped on with your crimpers, you're going to take another, your wire that you're going to run, your you know positive and negative wire you're going to run, and you're going to crimp it into the other side. So positive and negative is going to go into the other side of the rock light. You're going to crimp it down. Then you're going to take a torch. These crimps that we have are heat shrink crimps. I would suggest getting those. You're going to, once you get everything crimped together, you're going to heat shrink it down and then put uh, you know conduit, electrical tape, you know whatever you want to use over crimps to cover them up okay one more thing and i'll kind of get on to that whenever we go to install but before like like i said if you're picturing this in the sense you have two rock lights mounted in the fender okay say so they're going to be mounted up in the fender like this all right 
instead of like doing the daisy chain connection on the end of all of this 10 foot wire lead you have here just kind of measure it out to the length that you think you need for the fender liner like behind the fender liner and then just cut them right here and then strip them daisy chain them together like i just explained and then once you get that daisy chain together and crimped you can take this extra 10 foot lead that you cut off and you can take it and recrimp it on to the to the two lights that are now connected into one connection and then keep running your wire down the truck um, that's kind of like a little like a little dumbed down crash course of how you would daisy chain uh hard wire rock lights so we're gonna get to putting them on the truck and then i'll kind of somewhat pick up with you throughout this install and um maybe show you some tips and give you a good a better idea of how you would want to run your wires and daisy chain them and crimp them together and everything else so uh, we'll get to that and I'll pick up again all right so another thing that you'll see people do you'll see and i don't know why people really do this but you'll see people take their fender liners like completely out i don't really ever see a need to do that most of the time you can do everything you need for the rock light install with the fender liner in the truck so, like here, you can see we took the fender liner, uh, the fender flare come off just slightly. We only took it off to about this point over here, just enough to get up in here. We took all of our bolts off. We didn't take any of these bolts off over here. All these are still in here. And that allows us to bend the fender liner down and get all up in here to where we need to. And we need to get. So, all we got to do is drill a hole for the rock light, run the wire through the, uh, the fender liner, and then take our nuts, our bolts, or self tappers, however you want to, you know whatever you want to use to secure the rock light to the fender liner then you're going to take it and just bolt it up into the fender liner and then you're just going to put the fender liner all back together so that's pretty much it uh, i'll kind of show you the little course of doing that and that'll be it all right so now you can see i've got the rock light mounted up in here bolted i ran the wire through and not see the wire at all there's no wire showing anywhere except on the back side obviously where the rock light it comes out of the rock light and then it goes straight up into the fender liner. All right, then I just took that bundle of the wire and I kind of balled it up and just shoved it kind of up into the engine bay. So whenever we lower the truck down, we're gonna pull that wire from the top side and then we're gonna, once we get it on the top side and get all the other wires ran up, we're gonna kind of all splice them and daisy chain them together, kind of how we did on the table over a second ago. Got the bolts put back together, fender liner pulled back in, and now it's time to go to the other side. And you're gonna repeat this process for both fronts and basically the same thing for the rear except instead of pushing the wire up into the engine bay obviously you're going to pull it down over to the frame and run it up the frame with all of the other rock lights that are coming up the frame to the engine bay so you're going to basically do that four times pretty much and then you're going to have all your fender liner rock lights mounted and then you got all your frame rock lights already magnetically stuck to the frame the last thing to do is just run all your wires all right so now we're on the driver's side back fender. All right, now this is something a lot of you guys probably don't really pay attention to, I guess. On most trucks, the rear fender liners don't have a plastic liner. You can buy a plastic liner and put the rock lights in it if you want, it doesn't matter. But what you can do, um, if you're you know, wanting, I guess, save money and you know, do it a different way, instead of buying the liner and putting the rock light in it and running, you can mount it to your metal liner, okay? And how you would do that is between, if you look up in your fender liner, so like this point, this area here, if you drill through this, it'll go into the bed of the truck, you'll be able to see a bolt, don't wanna do that. So there's a section under your rear fender liner that's about this wide, and if you drill up into that, it is in the cubby area between the outside painted bed skin and the inside bed skin. There's a little cubby area right there. So what you can do is you can drill a hole through that and then you can run your wire up and then you can take your arm and reach up in the you know in the front or the back of the fender liner up up in behind it and grab it and pull your wire down and keep running it down your frame. So I'm gonna kind of show you that. You're just gonna center up your rock light to a good area and then you're going to drill your hole. Now, that hole is in between the outside bed skin and the inside bed skin. So now whenever I you know, put my bolts up in there, my self-tappers, and you run your wire, you know, whatever you do, 
everything will be inside of the uh, bed skin. So now I'm just going to sit here and slowly fish all this wire up into the area. And you look up in here. See that cubby up in there? That's where you're gonna reach up in that hole and grab your wire and pull it down. Reach up in here. Try to grab it. If you can't grab it, you may want to. Uh, if you can't reach it, you may want to grab, you know, like a clothes hanger or a piece of, you know, stiff wire. And reach up in there and see if you can hook it. Get yourself a piece of stiff wire. And reach up in here. See that, but just took a piece of stiff wire and reached up in there and pulled my wire down in front of the fender liner. Now, what you're going to do is push this up in there. So, now your rock light is mounted up in there, your wires ran down, and now you're just going to keep taking your wire and fishing it up the frame and tie in to all the other rock lights that we have mounted. So, you can see we got one mounted right there. And we also got one mounted right there. Right there. Now you're just going to keep fishing everything up and tie it all in. All right, so now you can kind of see what we got here. So we got this rock light comes from the fender liner up there. It runs down, goes into the channel. Can't really see, but through the channel of the frame there. We got it run down. Is inside the channel of the frame here. Ran all the way down. Comes out. Now what we're doing is we're piecing... You can see here's the rock light coming out of the frame right here, and here's the other rock light on the bottom of the frame. We got two rock lights with two positive negative connections going into one positive negative connection. And then we're going to keep running this up the frame. So at this point forward, this one wire right here has both rock lights on it from the back, from the back going forward. Same thing we have over here. So here's the, the rear rock lights mounted here. Goes up over the frame, follows the factory wiring harness. This rock light in the fender liner goes down, meets over there, comes down, it follows the factory harness behind the gas tank, goes up. This is a ground wire, looks like. It keeps coming right through here. And all of those wires, you see those wires there? That's three wires. That's the, run, the one from the rear hitch mount, the one from the fender liner, this rock light right here, they all come up. There's three wires right there. You can see them. They all come up and meet, and they all tie in to a crimp connection that we got black taped, and then it comes and turns into one wire. And that one wire runs up and goes all the way to the front fender line. Okay, so that, that's kind of how, how you're going to run all the wires up. Now, one more thing I want to talk about. If you purchase our wireless remote, when you order the rock lights. Okay, our wireless remote can be used for anything. It can be used for wheel lights, it can be used for rock lights, whatever. But it has four output, output leads. Two zone ones and two zone twos. So with that being said, there's a few different ways you can wire rock lights up to that. If you want it to work correctly with the wigwags of the two zones, it wigwags back and forth. It'll bounce the power between the two zones. What that means is, you can wigwag your lights, like you can do passenger side to driver side, front to back. They'll flash back and forth, wigwag. Okay, and if that's the case, if you have that remote and you want to hook it up so it wigwags properly, you're going to want to wire everything the way I'm about to explain it. If you don't, if you have any simple standard on-off toggle switch, or if you don't want it to wigwag, you just want to hook all the rock light wires up to, you know, zone one, you can. Uh, you're, in that case, you're just going to connect everything together, uh, daisy chain it all together, all your rock lights together, and connect, connect it to that one zone. I would say one thing you want to pay attention to is your amp output. Okay, you don't want too much amperage, too much rock lights onto, you know, one zone because it may overpower the uh, the zone. Like it may be too much amperage for the zone, and that goes for any standard toggle switch as well. If you got a toggle switch, you might want to check on it. 
you go buy a toggle switch and you buy a 10 amp toggle switch and you have 30 rock lights that's probably too much amperage for that toggle switch you'll probably burn up your toggle switch it'll start getting hot with that being said if you want to if you're using our wireless remote and you're wiring it up that way i'll explain to you how you should do that uh, here in a second and i'll show you whenever we get under the engine bay and we start wiring everything up to the actual wireless remote but how you would want to wire this up with the wireless remote between the two zones where it can wigwag correctly is you want to cut you want to picture cut the truck in half in the middle all right all the rock lights from the from the rear half of the truck you're going to want to put both sides driver side and passenger side from the middle of the truck back you want to wire all those to the to the zone uh the, the same zone output so say you're going to wire all your rear rock lights to zone two so you got two zone two output leads connect all those rock lights to those two zone output leads all right same thing for the front anything from the middle of the truck forward you're going to want to connect it to zone one output okay and then then whenever you press your wigwag button on, or on your app or on your wireless remote when you're operating the lights you'll have the lights actually flash front back front back they'll do like a strobe wigwag pattern and we'll, we'll kind of you know get into that further once we get under the hood you're going to want to take this rock light right here and all the other ones tie into this one crimp connection point up here because like i said if you picture this is the middle of the truck right this rock light back here is toward the back this rock light's on the front of the truck so you're gonna want to take this rock light it's on a it's got its own wire that's why if you look up here where we ran the wire let me see if i can fish it out we have two you see this one of these wires is for the rear half of the truck and this one wire right here is for this one rock light it's going to go up into the engine bay with the rest of them just make sure you, you zip tie everything you know behind your factory wiring you know you can do if like this truck here it has these nice little crimp these factory things you can actually pop them down into that if you want there's multiple ways you can run it um but you know however you want to do it you can use the there are some things that have factory wire holds like this truck has factory wire holds you can stick the wires down in there anyways so at this point we have the whole rear half of the truck and this one rock light on the driver's side everything ran up and we just have it shoved up into the engine bay up up here we have the front fender liner shoved up into the engine bay in a second we're going to have to take our front rock lights and shove them up into the engine bay and we're currently working on the rear passenger side the frame here and the front rock light on the frame here we're going to shove it up in the engine bay once we get all that shoved up in the up into the engine bay all we got to do is lower the truck get pop the hood and then we're just going to pull all the wires uh, up into the engine bay and then we're going to connect everything up to the wireless remote and i'll pick up with you whenever we get to that point all right guys so now basically what we have is we got all of our rock lights mounted we got the rear ones mounted on the back of the uh hitch we got all of our wires ran up everything's ran up ran down the truck down the frame of the truck comes up the whole and remember how i said earlier we got it cut in half so the rear half we, there's a wire for the rear half that goes up and there's a wire for the front rock light on the frame that goes up. All goes up into the engine bay. Here you can see we go, we kind of just ran it up into the fender liner here, pushed everything up into the engine bay. We figured out that the battery is on the passenger side of the truck. So what we've done is we have this uh, driver side front rock light. We have it ran over and it connects into this one. Daisy chains together. So the two positive connections and two negative connections connect together. We have run one wire running up on the passenger side of the truck because this is where the battery is. So we're going to go ahead and run this wire up the passenger side. We have the whole passenger side, the rear fender, all the frame rock lights come up. And then, like I said, in the middle, it splits in half. And there's two rock lights that come up. I mean, two uh, wires come up, one for the rear half, one for the front half. It comes up, goes up into the engine bay. The front fender liner is ran up in the engine bay. So basically now all the wires are ran up into the engine bay on the correct passenger and driver sides and all the rock lights are mounted now we're going to drop the truck down pop the hood and pull all the rock lights up out of the engine bay all the wires 
We're going to tidy all that up, daisy chain it together how it needs to be connected up, and then we're going to connect it to a wireless remote, and it should be done. And I'll pick up you guys when we start connecting up under the hood. All right, guys, so now what we got here, we got every, all the wires pulled out of the engine bay. We got them ran over. And what we're going to do now is, well, this is our front fender liner wire. This is our front frame rock light. We're going to run these over together, crimp and daisy chain them together into one connection instead of two and then we're going to run it across the firewall via the factory wiring harness here we have this wire here which is our rear frame rock lights our rear fender liner and everything that we daisy chained under the frame already together this is the one wire here that has like let's see one two three four this rock light uh, this wire has four rock lights on it we're going to run it over, uh, along with the front two we daisy chain together over to the passenger side of the truck where the battery is and then once we get over there we're going to show you how we connect everything together up to a wireless remote and then I'll explain how you want to use the actual wireless remote and wire everything together and how uh, to wire everything up to, to that because it is a little bit confusing it seems like to some people you'll have your four output zones here and then your two battery leads right here with your inline fuse already and this wire here is just a we're just going to call it a uh, remote wire like a uh, antenna wire we're just going to call it that but that's pretty much it that's what you should get with our wireless remote is the actual remote box your four output zones your two battery leads and your remote wire we're not going to connect anything up to the white wire just leave it alone and then once we get it all hooked up I'll show you how to operate the remote and the light should be on and working all right, guys, so now, like I said, we have everything over there connected up and ran over. We have it ran across the factory harness here, and we have it pulled up. <clears throat> okay, and we have ours all sectioned out. So this wire here is for the rear, so we're going to put that on zone two. You can see this wire here is for the rear as well. We're going to put both of these on zone two. So they're, like I said, on your wireless remote box here, there's two zone two outputs right here. So you're going to put one to one zone, the other to the other zone two. All right, and that is the whole rear from the middle of the truck backwards to the rear of the truck is on these two separate wires, driver side, passenger side. All right, so we got that separated. The other thing we have here is the front. We have the front, the in the middle of the truck, frontward, we have the rock light under the middle. We have the fender liner. We have the front bumper, the ones under the front bumper. Everything is wired into these two, which we're going to do, like I said, there's two zone one outputs, these two right here. So we're going to do this, these two wires that we have daisy chained into one connection into this zone one output. And then we're going to take the other one that we have daisy chained into one connection to the other zone one output. So once we do that, we're going to get all that crimped up and connected. And then we're going to tape everything up, tidy it all up, and connect everything to the battery. And then we'll pretty much be ready. But that's just wanted to show you guys that. So I'll go ahead and get this crimped in here. So we like said we got our wireless remote here. This is our antenna wire we're not going to use. These two go these two big bigger wires go to your battery. And these are your uh, output leads, the four of them. Okay, so you're gonna take the rear two here, zone two. We're just gonna simply tie them in. All right, so we're going to take one of these zone, these rear outputs, that, crimp it down nice and good. Go ahead and get the last one. All right, so that's one rear zone two output. Take the other one, which is right here. Now we got the front ones. This is the front one we're going to connect to the zone one. Get this ready. Black to black and red to red. It's that simple. It's all you're doing. A lot of people get confused with hard wiring, and it's very simple. It's just two wires. Positive to positive, negative to negative. That's it. Okay. And now we got the last zone one output that we're going to connect up. So now we have all four of the zones connected up here. You can see them here. They're all crimp connected. Now you're going to want to heat shrink everything. So no, 
water gets inside. So now we got all of them heat shrinked up. Just gonna tape them all up with black electrical tape. All right, that done. Now you just want to finish tidying everything up. Make sure all, all your wires are, are zip tied up nice and tight. All right, so now you have all your zone wires connected together, your output zones. You can hide your uh, box. You can stick it between your battery. You can mount it on your firewall somewhere. You can you know, hide it however you would like to hide it. I'm going to tuck it between the battery right here so it sits in there nice and tight. Your white wire. Like I said, your white wire we do not need, so you can actually cut it off. the antenna reach just fine. So now, the last thing you gotta connect up is your positive and negative to your battery. So, you take your negative, stick your negative battery terminal on the battery. And then, connect the red one to the positive terminal on the positive terminal. Get nice and tight. Shove down in there. Just gonna put everything back together. So that's pretty much it. You got everything connected up. Everything is all wired in. Um, now you're just gonna tidy everything up, get everything tidied up, put all back. All right, guys. So we got pretty much everything finished up on the truck. Every, all the rock are mounted. Everything's wired up. The remote box is mounted in. I want to talk about your remote here. Okay, this is a confusing thing about these remotes. It seems to, for people. You see these two buttons here, one and two, that is your zones. It, when you first connect everything up, your rock lights are gonna be kinda on, but they're gonna be at half brightness when you first get everything connected up. It will not control anything if you do not press zone, the correct zone. So at first, when you first turn it on, you're gonna have to press zone one on, or zone one off, whatever. You know, you're gonna have to press the zone one button and then on, and then you're gonna have to press the zone two button and then on, if you notice, the front one's turned on, but the back ones aren't on. If I press zone two and then on, the back ones turn on back there. You see that? And then you got your, your uh, brightness buttons right here, right? Plus minus. So if you go minus, you see how it's only turning the rear, it's only brightening and dimming the rear rock lights. The front ones are not, they're not dimming, okay? If you, when you press any of these yellow buttons, it pairs both zones together so you do not have to do that anymore. So if I go wigwag, you see how it's wigwag and the rock lights are wigwag and back and forth? Okay, now when I press static, static means they're both on, okay? Now when I press off, they both turn off. When I press on, they both turn on at the same time. Okay, if I do brightness, I press the brightness up, they both get brighter. Press the brightness down, they both get dimmer. Okay, so that's kind of how the, the handheld remote works. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna press the brightness until they're all the way up. All right, that's kind of how that works. You got your 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 wigwag buttons, your your blink buttons, your your flash buttons. Everything's here, on and off buttons here. Everything's here. That's how you're gonna use this handheld remote. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your app. The remote comes with a piece of paper that has a QR code on it. If it does not, if you lose that QR code, just search up LED Show. That's what the the app icon looks like. Click that, open it up. Then you're gonna click your little Bluetooth thing here. You're gonna make sure your device is linked up. Okay, once that's connected, it's on. This is your, 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 your phone is now your remote. So now you can turn it off, on, off. Turn them on, they're on. Front, rear, everything's on. You wanna turn the brightness up? Turn the brightness up. See how that, your little bar here? Dim it down, turn it up. Brightness is all the way up. So then you got all your other options, like your blink button, okay? And they're gonna be blinking. You can take the, the speed button and change the speed faster. And it's gonna be blinking faster. Turn it back down. 
turn it on breathing. It's going to get bright and dim slowly. Then this is where I told you earlier about how you want to cut everything. We wired everything. The half of the truck rearward is on a separate zone and the half of the truck forward is on a separate zone. Your wigwag buttons. Wigwag. You see how it's going from front to rear? Wig, you know, flashing back and forth. You can change the speed up, turn it faster. All kinds of stuff you can do with this remote. They got different wigwag pattern. This is a different wigwag pattern. Got a strobe pattern. Tons of different patterns. You use static, the, the static button. It means fully just solid. But this right here is a 12 piece of the 120 LED. You can see hardly any shadows left with only 12 rock lights, fully magnetic. We got this install done in about two and a half hours. This, you know, it's the, the magnets help you a lot when it comes to installing. Um, you can see that's only one rock light per fender. So now what we'll pretty much do is we will kind of run some B-roll for you, you know, just some stuff for the rock lights, the lights off. The customer will be coming to pick up this truck before it gets dark. So sadly, I won't be able to take any videos of it outside of the shop in the like in the nighttime. I will just have to send you the or show you the videos of just, you know, inside the shop with the rock lights on. But that's pretty much it. And if you guys got any questions, you can email us at northgeorgialighting at gmail.com and check us out online at northgeorgialighting.myshopify.com. I believe that's the, the URL. If it's not, I'll tag it in the description of the video. Um, and you guys can purchase everything there. Like I said, these are not, these are our second brightest. We have uh, a rock light brighter than these, and we are about to release a rock light brighter than the 150 LEDs here in the next couple months. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.